Now we will talk about the second type of interaction that can occur between systems uh, A and A prime. Uh, so the first one, if you remember, was a thermal interaction. We can have energy exchange in the form of heat between the, these two systems when there is a thermal contact and the result of this interaction was not a change in the energy levels themselves because the external parameters were fixed it was a change in the probabilities of the occupancy of the energy levels now in adiabatic interaction first of all we have to uh, find the conditions under which this uh, interaction can occur uh, so uh, we would like to avoid a thermal interaction therefore we need to have some sort of uh, isolation between the two systems so first thing we should note is that the two systems uh, a and a prime cannot have a thermal interaction under a certain condition cannot have a thermal interaction and that implies that we cannot have energy exchange between these two systems in the form of heat so Q heat absorbed will be zero and this can be achieved if we have uh, the two systems uh, being suffi sufficiently separated so we can have a large uh, separation uh, between the two systems they are sufficiently separated in space so this is one way we can achieve uh, thermal isolation between the two systems or uh, we can use a special material uh, that will act as a thermal insulator so they, they can be separated by a thermal insulator uh, and this can be for example uh, asbestos which is extremely carcinogen they used to have this thermal insulation for buildings uh, and now they're removing all the asbestos uh, from the buildings because it's very carcinogen and uh, fiberglass so these could be uh, acting as thermal insulators and if you have achieved this thermal insulation between these two systems uh, a process that is going to occur uh, that will allow the interaction between the two systems while the systems are thermally insulated that occurs while thermally insulated that is we have no energy exchange in the form of heat so q is equal to zero this type of process is going to be called an adiabatic process adiabatic process so adiabatic process means q is equal to zero now if we have this adiabatic interaction at, and if we cannot uh, exchange in the energy in the form of heat uh, what is the energy exchange mechanism well it is a uh, mechanical work um, so we can have an increase in the mean energy of uh, an adiabatically isolated system so the increase of the mean energy not as a result of thermal interaction because we didn't allow thermal interaction so increase in the mean energy of an adiabatically isolated system so adiabatically isolated system has no heat exchange this is going to be called the macroscopic work done on the system so this uh, work will be done on the system and there is an alternative 
So if I'm doing macroscopic work on the system, it will result in an increase of the mean energy of the system work done on the system. Now, if I have a decrease in the mean energy of an adiabatically isolated system, uh, so if I have a decrease, decrease of the mean energy of an adiabatically isolated system now uh, I have an energy release mechanism this is going to be called the macroscopic work done by the system macroscopic work done by the system so if it is work done on the system that means its internal energy is uh, the, the mean energy is increasing if it is work done by the system then the mean energy is decreasing so as you know we can show work with w so w work done on system a will be equal to the change in its mean energy and work done on system A prime will be equal to the uh, increase in the mean energy of uh, system A prime. So these will be work done on systems A and A prime. And if you remember, A plus A prime, a star system is isolated. So there is no energy exchange mechanism for A star. So it has a total constant energy. Therefore, the work done on system A plus work done on system A prime should add up to zero. So work done on system A is equal to the work done by system A prime. So it's minus the work done on system A prime, which is work done by system A prime. Okay, so uh, what I have learned is that the work done, the work done on system A is the work done by the system system a prime okay and um, during this process when we're doing work on a system uh, the external parameters on these systems uh, are changing somewhat so this will result in a change in the energy levels so if you remember in thermal interaction we have the energy levels fixed because external parameters were fixed probability of occupancy of these energy levels was changing while in adiabatic interaction external parameters are not fixed so we should note here that these energy levels will change. So some external uh, parameters change uh, during an adiabatic interaction so that the energy levels are changed okay so energy levels are changed external parameters are no longer fixed as in the case of a thermal interaction now i'm looking at for an example a single uh, spin one half particle single spin one half uh, its magnetic moment i call mu zero it's inside a varying 
magnetic field otherwise it's thermally insulated so that we have no thermal interaction now if you look at uh, initially what I have on this system so this is in part A I have this initial configuration uh, the energy levels are uh, mu zero B and minus mu zero B so I have an external magnetic field uh, B that is acting on the system it's pointing up and therefore uh, the energy levels are split as mu zero B and minus mu zero B if the magnetic moment is pointing uh, up then it's going to have a negative energy minus mu zero B so it's E plus is minus mu zero B and if it is pointing down uh, anti-parallel to the magnetic field the energy is higher plus mu zero B now the probability of occupancy of these energy levels I gave as 0 0.1 and 0 0.9 so if you calculate the mean energy of the system E bar uh, initially you find uh, you're going to have uh, an energy in mu zero B with probability 0.1 and an energy minus mu zero B with probability 0.9 so if you add these up you're going to get the mean energy that is given here in the figure minus 0 0.8 mu zero B now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this magnetic field so the magnetic field that was pointing up was B now it has become B1 okay so uh, I'm going to change magnetic field B to B1 but I'm going to do this slowly what is the uh, term we use for small changes in external parameters so that the system is at equilibrium at all times during the process if you remember this is called quasi static process quasi static process so we have quasi static adiabatic process there is no uh, heat exchange with the environment so that the probability uh, levels here are fixed so if you consider what is going on in this figure in part B I'm going to have uh, probability levels fixed and that is because there is no heat exchange there is no thermal interaction however um, because it's a quasi static process the energy levels uh, change with no change in the probabilities so what are the new energy levels so E minus uh, final value is mu zero B one and E plus final value is minus mu zero B one okay so I find that the final value of uh, the mean energy of the system that is E bar final will be so energy is mu zero B one with probability 0 0.1 and minus mu zero B one with probability 0 0.9 so this will give me a final mean energy of the system minus 0 0.8 mu zero B one so what happened in this process we have changed the mean energy of the system so we have achieved a delta E bar we went from minus 0 0.8 mu 0 B to minus 0 0.8 mu 0 B1 so the change in the mean energy of the system is minus 0 0.8 mu 0 B1 minus B so there is a change in the mean energy of the system as a result of uh, this adiabatic interaction now what happens if I don't do it slowly okay 
So in the second scenario, I'm changing the external parameter magnetic field B to B1 fast. So if you do it fast, you don't uh, retain equilibrium at all times during the process, as in the quasi-static process. And in this case, in this scenario, probability uh, levels, probability values change, as well as uh, we're going to have a change in energy levels change. Change in energy levels. Energy levels also change. Okay, so in this case, it's not a quasi-static process and this will result in a change in the probabilities as well. So that is a more um, an undesired situation if you're doing a thermodynamic uh, analysis of this process. So in this scenario, when I don't do a quasi-static process, I have a change in the probability levels and energy levels. And let's say that the, N, the probabilities are now 0 0.3 and 0 0.7. And as a result, I have a final uh, mean energy of the system. So let's calculate it here. Uh, with 0 0.3 probability, I have mu 0 B1. And with 0 0.7 probability, I have minus mu 0 B1. So it gives me a final mean energy of the system minus 0 0.4 mu 0 B1 and a change in the mean energy of the system will be minus 0 0.8 mu 0 uh, so that's not that's not the final minus 0 0.4 mu 0 B1 final mean energy minus the initial mean energy plus 0 0.8 mu 0 B so this is going to be 0 0.4 mu 0 uh, B1 minus B1. So let's do this properly. Let's take this into minus 0 0.4 mu 0 parentheses so that it will be B1 minus 2B. So as you can see, we have a different uh, change in the mean energy of the system if the process is not quasi-static. So let's just review what we said. Uh, the two systems, A and A prime, cannot have a thermal interaction, Q is equal to zero, if they are thermally insulated. This insulation can be uh, achieved either by separating the two systems to a very far distance or using a thermal insulator material such as asbestos or fiberglass. And the process that occurs, on, occurs under these conditions with thermal insulation, where there is no heat exchange, is called adiabatic process. The increase in the mean energy of the system occurs due to macroscopic work done on the system, or its mean energy can be decreased if there is work done by the system. Because the total system A plus A prime is isolated, we have no exchange, uh, no energy change for the total system. E star is equal to E plus E prime. Uh, and you have, there is no change in this one. So delta E bar plus delta E prime bar must be zero. So you have delta E bar is equal to minus delta E prime bar. So work done on system A is equal to work done by system A prime. And while this work is done, external parameters change and energy levels are going to be changed. Now the probability of the occupancy of these energy levels may or may not change. If you do it in a quasi-static process, if you do it very slowly, then the system uh, retains its equilibrium at all times during the process and probability uh, of occupancy of the energy levels don't change while the energy levels are slowly changing. Uh, however, if you do it fast, then it's not a quasi-static process and you will have a change both in probability of occupancy 
and the energy levels. So this is what we see for a single spin one half particle whose magnetic moment is mu zero in a varying magnetic field under two scenarios, very changing the magnetic field slowly, quasi-statically or fast.